Oh, this you crazy mother. I don't like reflections. I'm going blind. Okay. Um I guess it's been what? Six six months, eight months, a year since Ford released the facelifted S550 Mustang. I don't even know if that's still its generational title, but I figured that that would have been the end of the uh, interesting stylistic moves that um, the big three were going to make to their uh, pony cars. Since then, nothing's really been happening. I think we got uh, nothing. But now Chevrolet stepped to the table and said, Hold my beer, Ford. Yeah, so, uh, I stole this joke, but I can't for the life of me remember who I stole it from, so if you know, give him some credit in the comments. Show you how you really do it. Um, they have decided that they are going to, I don't even know how to put it. These are the press photos that General Motors released, and quite honestly, this doesn't look bad. I get a little bit of a... I don't know, first gen Camaro out of this um, in the grill, but that's kind of a stretch. This is where it gets bad. And I have no earthly idea what's going on here. Like truly no earthly idea. It's the headlight or taillight elements now are free floating in this like plastic, uh, acrylic almost like headlight lens and then uh, they just kind of look like ovals and I, I don't know something's just not jiving here with me headlights look fine I'm not ecstatic about the rest of the uh, the rest of the redesign I could palette the nose if the back end uh, didn't look like a fourth grader with a set of Crayolas did it um, so I stand in a very weird position. It's got a lot of interesting elements going on. Like, no one thing about them am I like, oh, that's ugly. But everything as a composite is just confusing. To be strictly honest, I, I don't quite understand what General Motors is going here, going for here. And um, this is on, you know, we're looking at this on upper trim RS cars and SS cars. And it's a... Um, a bit interesting to see that this car doesn't really look good on top trims. Even the facelifted Mustang looks okay on top trims because the back end still looks nice. Front ends, I've seen it, still not a fan. Um, but this just looks kind of goofy. And that kind of goofy, I mean really goofy. But that's just going to bring the cost of the pre-facelift cars down because there's a new one out and about now. And uh, I am mad about that. You can pick a 6th gen uh, Camaro up now for not very much money. Um, relatively speaking, I mean, it's 460 horsepower or something um, out of that LT1. And, you know, I'm not, not mad. Not mad at all. I don't know if I could rationalize it over, like, uh, a C6 Corvette. But that interior is pretty compelling. I just don't know if I fit in them. Or I do know I don't fit in them. I just don't know if I can make myself fit in them. But, all right, guys, this is just a quickie. I wanted to see if anybody else could explain this to me. I understand General Motors is going to sell a lot of these cars. Chevy's not going to have a problem selling Camaros ever. They'll be on rental lots. They'll be in driveways. They'll be 13-year-old girls fawning over them. And they'll be 16-year-old girls driving V6s on their way into, uh, into school. Do they even make a V6? Yeah, they make a V6 Mustang. I'm, oh, and then there's a 1LE package for the four-cylinder now, which is neat. Um, Kind of happy John, uh, Chevy decided they were going to do that. Because quite honestly, uh, between a four-cylinder and a V6 1LE, even though the V6 sounds pretty good. Let's see if I can cut some footage of that from somebody. Um, the four-cylinder turbo is just kind of tunable. Um, so I'll... Uh, I'll leave it at that. Let you guys call me an idiot or uh, dislike the video. Dislike, um, don't comment, and I don't want subscriptions at all. 
And uh, yeah, I guess I'll, uh, I'll catch you in some video at some point when I make one in four or five months.